All right, so in this video, we want to talk about a few properties of line integrals um, as, um, as they relate to some of the properties of curves and some of this terminology of curves. Uh, so the first properties have to do with how parameterization affects line integrals. Um, so remember that we can also talk about line integrals for scalar fields, right? So if you're dealing with a scalar field, so scalar function f, okay, and we do this integral, integral over c of f ds, and so we do that as the integral from a to b, f of r of t, times the magnitude of r prime times dt. It turns out that this integral is, is completely independent of parameterization, okay? So, so it doesn't depend on, on r. It doesn't depend on the choice, right? As long, as long as r is some parameterization whose range is the curve c, right, as long as the image is c, then you're going to get the right answer. So two people with two different parameterizations will get the same result for this integral. And the, uh, the proof, we're not going to do the proof, but it more or less just amounts to change of variables, right? It's, it's doing substitution. So if you have two different parameterizations, then they're related by some change of variables. You do the usual kind of, you know, substitution trick in your integral and you find that uh, you get the same result either way. Okay? Um, and to some extent, the, the fact that it doesn't depend on the parameterization, right, that's why you have this magnitude of R prime in here, right? It's, it's accounting for the fact that, you know, depending on the parameterization, right, you might have the, your R of T might trace out the same points along the curve as somebody else's R of T, but the kind of speed, if you like, at which you trace them out, right, the way that this point thing actually moves as T increases, that might be different depending on the parameterization, which means that the magnitude of this vector might be different, right, at any given point along the curve, you have to have the same direction, well, same or possibly opposite, right, if you're going the wrong way. But the magnitude will be the same, right? And, or the magnitude will be different, possibly. And, and so that's why you have this in here, right? So that, that term accounts for the fact that if, if somebody else goes along this curve twice as fast, this vector is gonna be twice as long, but that's, that's accounted for in the integral. So it doesn't depend at all, okay? If you have a, if you have a vector field, right, and we're writing down this integral here, I won't repeat it. Uh, well, you can think about, if you look at this, you say, okay, well, in this case here, remember that what you're really doing, the other way that you can write this down, and maybe I'll, I'll do that over here, um, is that you could also write this as the, the integral along C of f dotted with the unit tangent vector, right, ds, right? So you can, you can think of it that way. It will give you this integral, of course. Um, so the fact that you're doing this dot product means that this integral sees something about the parameterization. Uh, what it sees is it sees the direction of this vector, right? It's not going to see the magnitude because you're adjusting for this unit tangent vector, right? You're, you, you know, the magnitude goes away because you're doing the, you're dividing by the length. Um, but it will see the direction. So it kind of depends on the parameterization, but only the orientation. So it depends only on the orientation, all right? So as long as you choose a parameterization that matches the orientation of the curve, then you're going to get the right answer. And if two people choose different parameterizations, as long as they both match the orientation of the curve, you will both get the same answer. 
If two people choose parameterizations and one person's matches the orientation of the curve and the other person's parameterization goes the wrong way, goes the other direction along the curve, um, your answers are going to differ by a minus sign, right? So if you, if you get the orientation wrong, you're going to be off by a minus sign, um, which is something to be mindful of. You might find as you're working through some of these problems that occasionally these sign errors occur. Uh, chances are when you run into sign errors, it's because you are not working with the correct orientation. So that's something to be aware of as you're working through these problems. Okay, so that's good to know. The next property has to do with piecewise functions, right? So if I have a curve C and it's piecewise smooth function, so it's the join of two or possibly more um, smooth curves. And so this is a piecewise smooth curve. So if I want to integrate along this curve, well, there's a simple rule. The integral along C of f dot dr is simply the integral along C1 plus the integral along C2 all the way down to the integral over the last piece, right? And we've already used this rule. We've used this rule in some of the examples, right? Without actually stating it as a formal rule, we've used it um, to integrate along curves that consisted of more than one piece. Okay, so that's fine. And, and this, you know, if you think about it, this makes sense, right? Because if, you know, this is the same thing with, so the thing you should compare with is, you know, that the integral from, say, A to B of fx dx plus the integral from B to C of fx dx is the same thing as the integral from A to C. Right? Uh, in fact, if you were going to try to give a proof, at some point the proof would boil down to this property of, of definite integrals. Okay. The other property is that if you integrate the wrong way along a curve, so remember minus c means the same curve, but with the opposite orientation. Well, you can guess what happens, right? That's going to introduce a sign change here for your unit tangent vector, but otherwise nothing changes. And so if you go the wrong way, you'll be off by a minus sign. Uh, again, this, this has its counterpart in regular kind of, you know, single variable calculus that you would have seen in Calc 1. You should compare to the rule that says that the integral from B to A is the negative of the integral from A to B. Right. It's more or less where this is coming from. Okay, so you'll, you'll see some of these put to use. Well, I mean, you'll see these properties put to use most often. Um, you're, you're never going to sort of directly rely on these properties that um, these integrals don't depend on parameterization. Aside from the fact that it means that when you're working through these exercises, if you're given a curve and you're not told what the parameterization is, you don't have to worry about choosing the wrong parameterization, right? As long as your parameterization produces the curve that you want it to produce, you're going to get the right answer regardless of how you choose that parameterization.